Hello and welcome to Your Health Reclaimed. This is your host, Dr. PNB. Today, we are going to talk about a really popular subject. <laughs> Not really. Um, sugar. You know, you guys have probably heard me talk uh, a lot about that topic. And especially a lot of my seminars and presentations that I've done over the years. I have spoken about sugar and for a good reason. Sugar is a pernicious substance that uh, has an extremely... Uh, you know, a large contribution to our chronic ep disease epidemic in this country. And today, I am going to talk briefly about the eight natural sugars that are supposedly healthier for you. Um, I'm going to give some links and some um, information in the, you know, after we finish that you guys can do some, you know, very thorough uh, and dig, uh, deep, you know, dig deep uh, into the topic of a sugar, why it's so dangerous from you know from chemical and biochemical metabolic you know standpoint. Uh, here, I'm not going to talk about the details and the intricacies. <clears throat> Basically, here I just want to talk about a big problem that I see with my patients and my clients a lot, and uh, they have you know the belief that there's uh, you know very good natural sugars that are a lot healthier and better for you, and unfortunately, that is not the case. Uh, so I'm going to talk about what they are, and on, at the end, I'm going to clarify exactly what they pertain to and primarily who they pertain to, okay? Like we talked about you know, numerous times before, people ask, is something good for you? Is it bad for you? You know, there, there are some things that are absolute. There are things that are absolute and they're not good for anybody. Uh, and there's some things can be, you know, very good for everybody, but most of the things like anything else, it's not whether they're really bad for somebody or really good for somebody. The question is really, are they really good or bad for, for who? You know, uh, are they good for you? If they are so, they might not be good for somebody else. So we're going to talk about this today, you know, afterwards, because there's a lot of confusion over this topic and things are never black and white. Okay. It's really depends on the person uh, and their unique situation. And in this case, you know, I'm talking to my audience is primarily not to healthy and vibrant people, but it is to people that I work with, folks that, you know, have chronic disease and would like to address it, would like to get better. Uh, so again, topic today is going to be sugar and good reason. Uh, it's, it's a big, it's a big, massive problem for pretty much everybody. And a lot of people that say that they, it's not a problem for them, uh, they're delusional. They're simply delusional, they're lying to themselves, so they're just straight out lying. No. But sugar is extremely addictive um, and for a good reason. So I'm not going to go into the details again. I'm going to give you some information at the bottom uh, after we finish here. And um, you guys can go and do a deep dive on you know, the topic uh, of sugar and why it is you know, so dangerous and damaging. Okay. So many foods in our you know, local you know, healthy, you know, soup supermarkets, whatever it be, you know, Sprouts, Whole Food, Trader Joe's, whatever it be, you know, they have, you know, alternatives that tout to be, you know, regular, you know, a lot better alternatives and healthy alternatives to, you know, the good old sugar, are basically implying a more nutritious choice, you know, things like brown sugar and cane sugar and honey and, you know, just organic uh, honey and brown rice syrup. Basically, the marketing suggests that, you know, products like this that are labeled organic or all natural, uh, have a far less damaging effect than processed sugar, uh, but the truth is, it's not. That's that's not that's not true at all. Natural organic really doesn't mean anything when it comes to sugar, whether it's honey, agave nectar, you know, beet sugar, or whatever else. It's it's still sugar. People always ask me, you know, in my seminars, well, you know, is all sugar bad? If you have metabolic disease, yes, it is. Sugar is sugar, and sugar is sugar. Bottom line, it doesn't matter. I don't care what it's from. Okay, but. This trips a lot of people because, you know, generally speaking, people do a good job in marketing or companies do to trick people that something is better than, you know, something else. In this case, all those alternatives we're going to talk about are better than regular good old white table sugar. Okay. Um, they always ask, well, you know, what about added sugar versus naturally occurring sugars? You know, what is the difference? Uh, table sugar or AKA sucrose uh, is nearly equal amounts of glucose and fructose. Okay? Glucose is the body's primary energy source that comes from the foods that we eat, primarily carbohydrates, such carbohydrates. 
Fructose is a natural, simple sugar of founding fruits and vegetables, primarily fruits, of course. Uh, it's also commonly added to processed foods and used to make products like high fructose corn syrup, which is probably definitely the worst of the worst. Consuming too much of either these can definitely have you know, health consequences. If somebody's battling chronic disease, as I said, consuming these substances, regardless of how little, it is, is not going to help them at all. If anything, many times you can hurt them by not allowing them to truly improve. So there are consequences. Uh, too much glucose, everybody you know, knows, that leads to blood sugar spikes. Too much fructose you know, will not cause the same rise in blood sugar, but can still lead to insulin resistance and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's why for a while, people used to excuse themselves, say, well, I'm eating fructose, and fructose is natural, it's extracted from fruit, and therefore I can have a lot more of it because it really doesn't, you know, excite insulin response like regular table sugar does. Well, yeah, technically that is true, but luckily over time people realize that there has other damaging effect. And the reason being is because the liver metabolizes fructose, and in the presence of excess fructose, the liver can start turning the sugar into fat, a process known as de novo lipogenesis or DNL. So no matter what form of package the sugar comes in, your body will still breaks it down into the, you know, these basic compounds of fructose and glucose. Whether the sugar in the body you eat is naturally occurring or added doesn't really matter for optimal metabolic health. It really doesn't. Instead, the total amount that a person consumes and how quickly and easily the body absorbs it, it really has the most impact. Excess dietary sugar will lead to health problems without fail eventually. Um, most likely to, you know, obesity and type 2 diabetes. But even if the person doesn't get type 2 diabetes technically and or become obese, they still are going to have a metabolic issue and a problem with that, uh, such as insulin resistance. So excess dietary sugar, you know, again, it, it will lead to problems. And people that are chronically ill with chronic metabolic diseases, to them, even small amounts of that can be detrimental to their uh, improvement and can drastically slow down or even completely retard their healing. So here are the eight common misconceptions uh, and natural you know, sugars that I always tell people to avoid. And they are the most common ones because I get uh, these ones all the time. People ask me about this all the time. So first one is cane sugar, especially if they buy a certified USDA organic cane sugar. So cane sugar, it kind of is probably the oldest source of uh, you know sugar available to us predating over 2,500 years ago. I believe it was initially you know discovered or made in India. It's made out of sugar cane. This is basically that type of tropical grass that is usually was at least native to South Asia. You know, obviously in Florida has it. Um, there are many types of sugars that are made from sugar cane, including processed white sugar, brown sugar, molasses, and so forth. Sugar cane is mostly sucrose. So since sucrose comprises of one fructose and two glucose molecules, raw sugar cane juice has an even glucose to fructose based ratio. So while cane sugar is roughly 99% excuse me, sucrose, and brown cane sugar, uh, is between, I don't know, 88 to 93 sucrose, it, it really doesn't matter. It, it's, it's still problematic. So the takeaway is no matter the form, excess cane sugar will lead to rapid rising glucose, okay? Even products that, again, labeled as completely you know, natural and organic uh, or unrefined still go to an extraction, crystallization, and packaging process, which puts them on par with regular table sugar. So I don't care we you buy, you know, Demerara sugar, organic, you know, uh, whole raw crane, you know, crystallized cane sugar. It doesn't matter. It is still a pernicious product that you should not be using. Okay. Again, I'm not talking about someone who is young and metabolically healthy, especially if they're using athletics and certain other uses that they're using that for, you know, uh, appropriate, in an appropriate manner, in an appropriate safe manner. I'm strictly speaking here with people who A, are obese and or have metabolic diseases that are trying to reverse, okay? So what amount of sugar is safe? Really normal, especially when it comes to somebody trying to reverse type 2 diabetes, you know, improve or really completely reverse insulin sensitivity issues, <clears throat> insulin resistance, and or they're trying to lose excess body fat, such as in obesity, okay? 
So number two, brown sugar. Brown sugar all it does combines white sugar that is made from sugar cane with the molasses to give it a unique taste and color. But like white sugar, it still goes to the same extensive extraction and packaging process that strips away its nutrients, leaving a product that is mostly empty calories. The sugar composition of, I mean, the, the composition of brown sugar is still 88 to 93% sucrose. Pretty much same as cane sugar. Really not much difference and really not healthy at all, okay? So like cane sugar, corn syrup, and honey, brown sugar is often added to already processed foods and is really not healthier than other sugars at all. So do not be fooled. If you see brown sugar, it means absolutely nothing. It's still the same garbage. Number three, that one became really popular back in 2008, uh, the agave nectar, okay, or agave syrup. Uh, it comes from Mexico. Uh, it's made out of, uh, you know, the agave plant, which is uh, like a succulent cactus, some kind. But because of its high fructose content, agave nectar tastes sweeter than even syrups with similar sugar makeup. So agave nectar is more than 60% fructose. The remainder is composed of glucose and trace amounts of sucrose. Agave syrup, again, is high in carbs, but it you know, has a low glycemic index, technically speaking. Therefore, people immediately, especially back in the day, assume that it is a natural, healthy alternative to sugar. And unfortunately, it is not, okay? So this might sound like a good thing as a low GI means, GI, I'm talking about glycemic index, means the body takes longer pro to process that sugar, okay? But the problem is high fructose content of agave syrup. That is the issue. Again, since the liver is the only organ able to process this simple sugar, it can easily get overloaded, which it does, and leading to long-term problems like fatty liver disease and insulin resistance, like we talked about previously, the DNO, and with the novel, um, lipogenesis. So it, again, lay off of it. Um, also, in addition to that, agave syrup is mostly, depending on where you get it from, still is very highly refined and processed. Okay, it's not really the original native, you know, raw, they call, you know, pure raw unrefined agave uh, syrup that they used to make. It's very highly processed and refined. In addition to that, also, a lot of manufacturers actually are putting even very high refined, even high fructose corn syrup or fructose to the agave syrup in order to cut cost because you can't really trace that. So you can't really say whether there's anything added to it. But from the inside industry standpoint, there has been a known fact for a while. Okay. So, bottom line, stay away from agave syrup. Number four. Coconut sugar, that has been kind of the latest and the greatest the last, I don't know, five, seven years, especially the, you know, the influx of, you know, coconut oil and, you know, coconut oil products and, you know, MCTs, the medium chain of glycerides, the whole thing with the, you know, the keto diet and all that, um, they really get introduced. Well, right after that, the coconut sugar rolled in and it was touted by default as the end all be all of a healthy sugar that has zero problems, literally. Uh, you know, some people even exalted it as absolutely 100% safe and not only safe, but actually extremely very healthy, just like coconut oil. And that's a lie too. That is absolutely not the case. So coconut sugar is made by evaporating the sap from coconut palm trees. Okay. So it's not even from the coconuts themselves. Like other sugars obtained from natural sources, coconut sugar will lose nutritional value depending on how it's processed, stored, and transported. Uh, the sugar composition is roughly 70 to 80 percent sucrose and between three and nine percent glucose and fructose. So coconut sap, again, from which coconut sugar is made, yes, it is technically rich in minerals, vitamins, and antioxidants, and offers a lower glycemic index than the comparative cane sugar. But a fine coconut sugar, the form typically used as an additive and as a sweetener that people buy in the grocery stores, is no better for you than cane sugar. And if you're going to justify, well, it has, you know, minerals and vitamins and excess, well, go eat some fruit, organic, natural, low sugar fruit, better yet, some good organic vegetables. So, here, you know, here you go. If you want to justify your minerals and vitamins and antioxidant intake. Now, it's really amazing how people will absolutely and utterly justify their poison and their addiction by any means necessary. It, it is amazing to me. Um, and they absolutely do not want to listen. So... That's kind of like saying that, you know, hey, I uh, have a very, you know, pure USB grade organic, certified organic cocaine. 
you know, <laughs> it's cocaine is cocaine. It's not going to make any difference. I promise you that. Um, so, again, coconut sugar, stay away from it. It is no good. Uh, and please don't sit there and justify, well, you know, it's the lesser of the two evil. And really, it's not. The bottom line is going to be the same. Okay. If you have metabolic disease, if you have chronic metabolic disease, like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, blood, you know, high blood pressure, you know, dyslipidemia, whatever it might be, you know, global inflammation, which pretty much anyone is going to have with you know, chronic disease, stay away from it. That is not going to help you. Okay. So don't justify it. Just get off of it. Okay. Number five. Number five is honey. So that's a very touchy one because a lot of people like the honey. You know, boy, they'll you know they'll they'll jump on your throat to defend the honey. So obviously, honey is a, is an ancient natural sugar that predates back, depending who you listen to, you know, five to eight thousand years ago. Uh, there are you know even Stone Age paintings that have been discovered depicting the use of sweet golden liquid, or aka honey. Um, numerous references have been given to that in the Bible as well. Uh, but when stored properly. It does. It really never goes back. And you know, research have, you know has found you know two thousand plus year old sealed jars of honey, buried by the Egyptians that are perfectly still preserved. Uh, you know, honey most certainly can have very high medicinal values uh, for many reasons, as you guys know. But sugar composition is still very high. So even if you're talking about unprocessed honey, that still contains roughly two hundred substances. Although the majority is made up of sugar and water, honey still contains about 35 to 40% fructose and glucose. So unlike many sugars, honey has some health benefits due to its antioxidant and antibacterial properties, which a lot of people do, uh, including also, you know, histamine tolerance and, you know, allergies and stuff like that can be really good for. Uh, it's been used as food and in traditional medicine for thousands of years. So unfortunately though, it's high carb content will still lead to a rapid blood sugar rise so it's not a healthy or really soft or stable sugar. And because it's not a sweet sugar, people by default are going to use a lot more of it. So again, just like the coconut sugar, there are better ways to get antioxidants and micronutrients, such as organic whole foods and vegetables, okay, among other things. First of all, we are talking about here, honey that is unrefined, unprocessed, raw, local honey, that is going to have the medicinal values that people keep arguing about. Most honeys that you buy from the store, even if they can be organic, they are refined. They have been heavily filtered. Most of them have been, they're not raw, I meaning they've been heated. A lot of the enzymes are not actively dead. And also, if you're talking about for pollen and allergies, that's only if you have access to raw and filtered local honey that has the biological signature from the pollen and of your area and the geographical location that you live in. So if you're getting you know, honey from Hawaii or something or from California, it's gonna have a little benefit, especially when it comes to allergies and stuff like that. Um, again, justification because it has natural antibiotics and other healing properties, that is still not a reason if you have metabolic chronic disease to be using honey. Is it okay if you used to literally use perhaps a teaspoon a day with your organic tea? Maybe that too depends on the person. I can tell you that, that the people with very advanced type 2 diabetes, with you know high blood pressure, high disease, and obesity, especially the more advanced they are, and if they have all three of the ones that I just mentioned, I mean any sugar has to be taken out initially. And I have seen people that a tablespoon, which is not a lot, a day of raw local organic honey, something that I was able to actually, you know, get locally. I was able to approve it initially. That I've seen be detrimental to the health and did not give them the ability to lose weight and to properly get their blood sugar under control, even that one tablespoon. And that's, that's, for some reason, it's very hard for people to believe. Again, this is not a podcast for somebody who is a vibrant, healthy individual, perfectly metabolically healthy, they're metabolically flexible, they're fit as a week, okay? And they're fine. That does not apply to them, okay? They can eat a cup of honey a day, every day, and nothing's going to happen. Okay, but again, if you have metabolic chronic disease, 
these things are very important and really you need to heat care salt here, okay? So honey, avoid it, okay? Allergy seasons, half a teaspoon a day, perhaps you might be able to justify, but then again, if you have those issues, taking something like quercetin and zinc and root and the vitamin C is gonna do so much more uh, you know, for your allergies and sensitivities and histamine intolerance than would, you know, half a teaspoon of honey. So again, best be avoided. All right, so number six, the maple syrup. That's uh, in Georgia and Florida, for some reason, maple syrup is not as popular. But up north, when I split in Michigan, it was very popular. And people people get their uh, pennies in a bunch very quickly when you talk about the maple syrup. Uh, <laughs> Why? Well, I don't know. But the sugar composition of maple syrup is about 60, 67% sucrose. The rest of the sugar composition is usually split between glucose and fructose and some other complex carbs. The takeaway here is that, like honey, completely raw, unrefined maple syrup contains, sure, a handful of vitamins and minerals, including things like you know, calcium, iron, magnesium, rubber, flavin, and thiamine. That is great. But if you're buying at the local store and pick up a bottle of, of the genetic maple syrup, it is not going to be that. It is going to be still be refined or sometimes highly refined or even bastardized product of half ma refined maple syrup and high, uh, half of high fructose corn syrup. Um, and it's not gonna have the benefits that you're looking for. Like all the sugars in the list, consuming it still will lead to blood sugar spikes. Okay, and therefore, again, if you have obesity or other you know, metabolic chronic issues, that will be detrimental to your health and to your healing journey. So that too, you have to avoid. And when people use maple syrup, because it's not really technically that sweet, they're not going to have a one or two teaspoons. They're going to usually have a quarter to half a cup with their pancakes or whatever else they're doing. So don't sit there and kid yourself, okay? So unless you can actually go and tap your own maple tree and you're actually able to collect the raw, unrefined, unfiltered, unheated sap and, and have that, which is really not even that sweet, technically speaking, I, I, I guess you might be... Okay, which pretty much 99.99% of the people don't have that access. So if you buy a bottle from the store, I don't care if it's organic and if it's grade A or grade D or whatever, it doesn't matter. Add sugar and sugar and sugar and sugar. That's just the bottom line. So that too, you need to stay away from. All right, so another alternative that kind of became popular, at least that I became aware of back in 2009, 2010-ish, was the brown rice syrup. Okay, so... What is the problem? The brown rice syrup is made of fermenting or breaking down of brown rice. This process turns the starch basically uh, in raw, the rice into a sugary syrup. Like other syrups, this one is very high in sugar, providing a lot of calories for very few nutrients. Brown, brown, me, brown rice syrup is almost entirely actually glucose. Okay. So the takeaway is organic brown rice syrup gets marketed as a healthier, healthier alternative to high fructose corn syrup, and actually that's why it was developed which high fructose corn syrup is like Satan, is like the worst of the, the worst. Uh, that's the worst metabolic poison in you know, the sugar world. Uh, but it's popular and it's gluten-free products and is an added sugar in rice-based items like energy bars and baby milk formula and so forth, kind of made it popular, all right? However, like the other sugars in the list, it will lead to a rapid rise in blood sugar. It is not healthy for you. So also some research also shows organic brown rice syrup that does or can contain high amounts of arsenic, okay? So those one test on a milk formula with brown rice syrup is the main ingredient show arsenic level six times higher than a safe drinking water level. Uh, and I remember that back in 2013, 2014. So bottom line, stay away from brown rice syrup as well. A lot of people like it for the, you know, the gluten-free, uh, even the grain-free people because it's a, it's a good thickener when they bake stuff. You know, it's pretty sticky. It's pretty thick. Uh, but again, you're just trying to feed your sugar addiction. So lay off of it. Okay. And here we go. Number eight, beet sugar. So where it comes from? As the name, you know, indicates, beet sugar comes from naturally sweet liquid of the sugar beet. Okay. Sugar beets, by the way, are um, one of the highest uh, genetically modified grown vegetables in this country as well. So that's, that's a whole other story. I'm not going to go into, but just keep that in mind. So the juice is extracted from the beet, purified, crystallized, and granulated into sugar. 
just like sugarcane, the beet sugar is very high in sucrose. So we all know the whole beets. Now we're talking about not genetically modified beets, but even talking about just organic, regular beets. Everybody knows that it's a very nutritious vegetable, okay? And researchers have found, you know, beetroot juice and supplementation to hold a lot of promise in controlling type 2 diabetes, improving kidney function, lowering blood pressure, you know, increasing nitric oxide production in the, uh, you know, the body, and so forth. So we all know that. But beet sugar, on the other hand, has none of those benefits, okay? Like cane sugar is often added to processed foods and it's converting to very high amounts of high, high fructose syrup because it's, again, it's genetically modified uh, and is, is subsidized by the government, just like the genetically modified grains are, corn and soy, for instance. And because of that, it's very cheap to make into high fructose corn syrups, okay? And which are extremely, extremely potent and sweet and are, again, they're hands down the worst of the worst. So keep those things in mind that, you know, we talked about, you know, and just really heed caution because, Sugar is very addictive. Okay, there's been plenty of studies done that with human subjects with rodents on numerous levels that you know really depict and show the you know addictive qualities of sugar. And if you don't believe me, if you're eating sweets, try stop eating sugar. See how you do. You're not gonna have a good time at all. It depends on severity and it depends on your you know genetics and other factors. You can have a severe withdrawal to that. Um, one of the studies that I was pertaining to is and the British, the British Medical Journal, okay, and was the correspondence to Dr. James uh, J. Uh, Dimico Lantoni from St. Luke's Mid American Heart Institute in Kansas City. And here's here's just real quick what the abstract said. That, that's one of the latest ones. In animal studies, sugar has been found to produce more symptoms than is required to be considered an addictive substance. Animal data has shown significant overlap between the consumption of added sugars and drug-like effects, including binging, craving, tolerance, withdrawal, cross synthesization cross-tolerance, cross-dependence, and reward and opioid effects. Sugar addiction seems to be dependent to the natural endogenous opioids that get released upon sugar intake. In both animals and humans, the evidence in literature shows substantial parallels and overlap between drugs of abuse and sugar from the standpoint of brain neurochemistry as well as behavior. So it's kind of hard to argue that, but yeah, look it up. You can look it up if you don't believe it. Go to Google Scholar and, and Google you know, Sugar Addiction. Um, there's a phenomenal movie. Uh, it's a documentary by Robert Lustig. He's a medical doctor, a very prominent physician. I believe from UCLA, that has has made it his life mission to actually present and speak on the dangers uh, and the addiction uh, of sugar. Um, the documentary is called "Sugar: The Bitter Truth." You can just Google that on YouTube; it's free. Um, you can you know spend hours upon hours of listening to research and studies, you know, depicting the severity uh, of sugar consumption, of chronic sugar consumption. So, you know, you just really have to think about what is it you're doing? What are your goals? What are you trying to achieve? Again, this podcast is not for somebody who is athletic, metabolically healthy, flexible, has no chronic disease whatsoever, and they're perfectly fine. Okay, they can, they can go with sugar for two months straight and, and nothing's going to happen to them in the long run. Okay, uh, but the people that I work with, the people that contact me for help, and what this podcast is for is not for those people. It's for folks that are sick, that have issues, and they need help, and they need to reverse those issues, okay? So let's real quick talk about alternatives to natural sugar. I beat this thing to death as far as different alternatives, you know, different products. I can tell you this, the best ones that have which do the test of time are liquid stevia extract, not powder stevia, liquid stevia extract, and also monk fruit or lohe extract. They're both liquid extracts. They're both very sweet. Stevia is, I think, 200 times sweeter than the sugar, actually. And they do a phenomenal job. And almost, almost always people are completely fine with either one or both. Okay. 
Um, sometimes, rarely, you have people that will not like Stevia, but eventually they'll get used to it. Surprisingly, I was, I was a person like me. It took me almost four months or so to get used to Stevia. And once I did, I absolutely loved it. Because back today, I got caught up in this whole health scheme of, oh, it's organic demerara, raw sugar, cane sugar, and that you can buy and some process unfiltered, you know, organic and natural. And because I like coffee, I like black coffee, which, you know, it's sweet. I used to use a lot of it to get it really to taste well. And I was thinking that I was literally doing well, which I wasn't. So when I discovered Stevia and eventually, you know, monk fruit, uh, it really was godsend because it made all the difference. I used that with all my clients over the years. And you can use as much or as little as you want. It will absolutely have zero effect on your blood sugar. And will have zero effect on you, your ability to actually lose body fat if you have excess you know, body fat or you know, to lose, especially if somebody's obese. So, you know, again, the argument that, you know, you all, you know, our bodies need glucose. Yes, we do. But that's endogenously produced glucose that is not, you know, artificially, in, you know, taken in from the outside. But, you know, and also that doesn't mean that you need to seek sugar in your food all the time. The body will create its own glucose based on what it needs. So again, not only can your body make glucose that it needs, which called process called gluconeogenesis, but you can also train your body to burn fat over glucose as well. And that's what's called metabolic flexibility, that a person can utilize body fat for storage, uh, for energy and or sugar. And people that are very metabolically flexible, they can go back and forth, no problem, you know, without, without any issues. So again, that's known as metabolic flexibility. But Remember, nearly all foods contain some form of carbohydrates. So eating a balanced diet of truly natural, truly whole, unprocessed foods will give you all the energy it needs, and the body's going to let you know. That's why if you're truly eating a healthy, wholesome, nutrient, highly dense diet, it's virtually impossible to become obese, diabetic, or increase your cholesterol or get unhealthy. It's just not going to happen. But the totally opposite is completely true. If you are, have chronic metabolic issues like type 2 diabetes and obesity, and if you start eating high-nutrient, dense, wholesome, well-balanced diet to as much as you, know, you want per day, you're going to keep losing weight. You're gonna, your blood sugar is going to improve. You're going to reverse you know, insulin insensitivity and resistance. And you're going to become metabolically healthy. That's all I tell people. Nutrition is the most powerful weapon you have against chronic disease. That's hands down. It's not supplements. It's not particular protocols. Other treatment options. It's nutrition. That is the most powerful weapon anybody has. And that's why I get a lot of calls and a lot of inquiries. Well, you know, if I'm not willing to change my diet or if I'm just kind of a little bit willing to improve my diet, you know, but I can afford or take all the supplements and, and you know, other treatment options that are available that are natural, can, can I reverse that? And I always tell them you can't. Because unless you change your nutrition, you will not succeed. I don't care what it is. Okay. Um, so just keep that in mind. Take those eight natural sugars that people say is healthy out of your diet. Look on the label. Don't just look in the nutritional facts label. Always read the ingredient list below the nutritional fact label. Because this is where you're going to hide we're going to find the hidden aspects. And a lot of companies are deceptive based on rules and regulations, their loopholes, what they can and cannot say. And they're really good at avoiding those pitfalls and they can start sneaking ingredients in that can be detrimental to you. So it might be a little bit that is not even listed on the nutritional fact, but you're going to show up. Like I have a lot of people, for example, show me, well, the product I... You know, I got, it was organic, it's gluten-free, dairy-free, great, and it has no sugar. I'm like, uh, okay, well, why don't you go ahead and send me a nutritional facts then? Sure enough, it says total sugar zero, total added sugar zero, great, okay. Go ahead and send me a snapshot of the ingredients list. And the first three, four ingredients, yeah, okay, yeah, sounds good. You start going down and you start seeing things like brown rice syrup, coconut, sap, coconut sugar, same thing, by the way, uh, you know, honey, you know, doesn't matter. Again, sugar is sugar is sugar. Hey, it's really that simple. So if you're trying to lose body fat, if you're trying to 
improve your metabolic health, sugar has to go. And depends on the severity of your condition, how long you have had it, and also your genetics, you will make a difference of how strict you have to be. Some people have to be severely strict. Okay, and that is why at some point in some people, a full-blown ketogenic diet works wonders for them, okay? Because that's what it takes. So anyway, that's the end of the podcast today. Again, just remember this, sugar is not good for you, okay? I don't care what, what anybody says, take it out of your life, okay? And sugar is sugar is sugar. I don't care from what source it comes in. So thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys have a phenomenal and healthy weekend and stay strong. Don't give up. Remember, if you don't give up, you will succeed. Uh, the formula for success, if there is one such thing, is don't ever give up. You fall, you just get right back up and keep going. You fall again. You keep doing it over and over again until it finally clicks and eventually it's going to click. I promise you. If you don't give up, you will succeed. So until next time, you guys have a great day. If you have any questions, reach out to us at drpnd.com. Go on our website, fill an inquiry. We give free assessments, free consultations. If there is anywhere we can help you, we would love to do so. Okay. God bless you guys. See you next time. <music>